Wikipedia is a new popular data store solution that is built off the Composition API. In this video, we'll highlight the features of Pina compared to Vuex, and then see how to use a Pina store inside of our Vue app. So one of the biggest differences between Vuex and Pina is the fact that Pina is modular by design. In other words, it's built to have multiple stores. In comparison, Vuex only has one store, and then you could have sub modules underneath it. But Pina allows each of these modules to be their own store, imported directly into components where needed, and this allows bundlers to code split and have better TypeScript inferences. Another difference is that while Vuex has a state, mutations, actions, and getters, Pina does not have mutations and only has state, actions, and getters. And there's a good reason for this. Previously, mutations were needed to add necessary dev tooling to see when exactly a component will change. But with a lot of Vue3's core features exposed, we can still see exactly when our state is changing without needing a specific mutation. Using the same kind of logic, Pina also lets us directly mutate our state, and we can see those changes in our dev tools. And just like I'm showing now, Pina does automatically hook into Vue's dev tools. So as soon as you install it, it'll add a tab that shows a timeline and lets us track what changes are happening to each of our stores. So let's go ahead and use this inside of our project. Let's say npm install Pina, and then inside main.js, we want to import create Pina from Pina, call app.use, and then invoke the create Pina method. Now let's create our first store. Let's create a folder called stores that will house all of our stores, even though in this video, we're just going to create one. And that will be called counter.js. First, what we want to do is say import define store from Pina, and then we'll export a const use counter store, set it to define store, and this takes two arguments. The first one is a unique name, and we'll call a counter. And then the second one is an object that has our different options. First, we'll define a state and set it equal to an arrow function that contains the initial state of our store. So we'll just return an object with a count of zero. Next, let's define some actions by saying actions, creating an object, and our first function will be called increment. This is a great time to point out that similar to other data store solutions, you can pass arguments into these actions. So let's say val and give it a default value of one. And inside, we can directly mutate our state by accessing this and saying this.count plus equals val. And we can also make these actions asynchronous. So for example, if we say async wait and add, we can first call a set timeout and then increment this.count. And then the final store property that we want to define is our getters. And these are essentially computed properties for our store. So for our example, let's create one called double count, create an arrow function that accepts our state and return state.count times two. And that's all we have to do to our store. Then let's open up a component and we can import use counter store from store slash counter. Then to actually create a reference to our store, let's say const store equals use counter store. Here we can directly mutate our state by saying store.count. We can call our actions by saying store.increment and then passing in a value. And if you want to see a full list of what's available in the store object, we can just console.log store. And then inside of our template, all of our properties are exposed under store. Let's create an h1 that says count equals store.count, an h2 that says double count is store.double count, a button that says increment, and one click to call store.increment, and another button that calls wait and add. And let's check it out. So as you can see, we load in, and if we hit increment, they'll immediately jump. And then if we call wait an increment, it'll wait two seconds. And then all of the reactive values will update. And this is already perfect. We can import this store into many components and our data will be synced up. One thing to note is that when we access store like this, we get an object wrapped with the reactive. So while we don't need dot value to access our properties, we also cannot destructure it and maintain reactivity. So for example, if we said const count equals store, this isn't a reactive value, but there is a Pina helper called store to refs that creates any reactive property inside of our store into a ref that we can now destructure. So if we say const count store to refs of store, count is now a reactive ref and will work as expected. So hopefully this Pina simplified video is enough to get you up and running, but I'd love to hear what Pina topics you'd love to see covered in the future. I know that in my last community post, this was a popular topic that you wanted to see. So I wanted to create this intro video to the technology and hopefully create more in-depth videos depending on what you're interested in. So let me know in the comments down below. And as always, like and subscribe for more view content.